hi there, it's uh, Husky 394 XP here. Just wanted to do a quick video on the pre-tribulation rapture issue. Uh, that is how I believe. Um, I'm dispensational, King James Bible believing, born again, and I believe that the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven year tribulation period, um, is something that the Lord is going to catch the body of Christ away. You can read about it, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through about 58, and John 10, there's also some references to this rapture. But I believe in it, And uh, but typically I've gotten into a lot of debates with people and they'll say things like, well, your belief system wasn't taught until John Nelson Darby. They won't deal with the scriptures. They'll put it into the context of John Nelson Darby taught it, so that's why you believe it. Okay? And I'm going to show you that that's nonsense. But I'm going to go with this philosophy of who taught what. Okay, so if John Nelson Darby taught the rapture, well then who taught that the church goes through the tribulation? Well, it's interesting. You go here to AmericanCatholic.org. I have a printed copy here. And it says, raptured or not, a Catholic understanding. And I'm not going to go over this thing point by point. I do have a sermon that I did on that. It's available at our uh, House Church website. And so I cover it paragraph by paragraph there. I'm not going to do that here in this just quick little video. But something very interesting I want to show you. Um, he says here, paragraph what I would call number eight. While speculation about the end of the world is as old as Christianity, this particular scenario is not. In fact, it is not yet 200 years old. Now, typical thing that you're going to hear when you are a pre-tribulation rapture believer is you'll hear that it was John Nelson Darby. And he goes on to talk about here in the article. You can read it for yourself by going to that website. And you're led to believe that it was never taught before that. But the problem is, if you go down a couple paragraphs more, paragraphs, what, paragraph what I would call number 26, it says, The Council of Ephesus 431 denounced it as a deviation and a fable. It was denounced again in 1516 at the Fifth Lateran Council. Now wait a minute. If the rapture theory, premillennial, pre-tribulation theory, has only been taught for the last 200 years, why was it condemned in 431 A.D.? That's a little bit more than 200 years ago. You see, the fact of the matter is, and again, covered it in the other study, the fact of the matter is, the Roman Catholic Church has taught for centuries that Christians, that the Church goes through the tribulation. And something else I want to show very quickly here, the Catholic Catechism, and here on page 193, you see down there at the bottom it says, I don't know if that's going to show up, the church's ultimate trial. And you read it, and they teach that Christians go through, well, the, they say the church, and of course Catholics have always called themselves Christians, and they're not, but uh, they say that the church has to go through this time of trial. Well. Let me tell you something, if you, are, if you have been saved and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses you from all sin, as it says in the Bible, why do you need to be purified more? But let me say something else. Why would the Catholic Church teach people, cast doubt on the pre-tribulation rapture? Very simple. You see, if you are living with the expectation that Jesus Christ could come back today, he could come back at any time. Let me read you a verse. Got all kinds of stuff in these pockets, don't I? First John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in Him purifieth himself even as he is pure. 
You see, if you are expecting Jesus Christ to come back at any minute, you will be busy working for the Lord. You will keep yourself pure. Before you click on some dirty thing on the internet, before you are tempted to smoke a cigarette or drink a beer, you'll think to yourself, Jesus Christ could come back. See, it's a purifying hope. Now, something else I want to show you. So, let me ask you this. What, why would the Catholic Church profit from getting people to think that they have to go through the Great Tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, as it's properly called? Well, there's a reason for that. You see, if you're living because Jesus Christ could come back to today, if you live that way, this is the kind of thing that you're going to be spending your money and your time on. Tracks. You're going to be very, very anxious to get the gospel out because today could be your last day. You know, when the rapture hits, when we're taken to be with Christ, your work for Him is over. Okay? But now, if you're going to go through the tribulation, you're going to be more interested, if I can get it out of my pocket, you're going to be more interested in this. You say, what's that about? Oh, well, you're going to have to survive for seven years. You can't take the mark of the beast. If you do, you'll lose your salvation. So, you're going to be more interested in surviving. Okay? And there's, there's a book, actually here, I have a printout of it. You can see it here, it's called Pre-Tribulation Planning for a Post-Tribulation Rapture. And, standard thing, it goes through how to have a survival garden, you know, how to, what kind of canned goods you should buy. What about tracks? What about getting the gospel out? Okay, preaching the word. Oh, well, you really don't have time for that, you see, because you have to survive for seven years without taking the mark of the beast. You see, the Roman Catholic Church does not want a bunch of Bible-believing, born-again Christians out passing out tracts because we get Catholics converted. And if you're a Catholic, by the way, you need to get out of that system. You need to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? That's what you need to do. So, this is a big subject. Read the passages in the Bible. Look at the Bible. Study the Bible dispensationally. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. It's a command. 2 Timothy chapter 2.15 it's not a suggestion. All right? Very important subject. And for those of you out there who do know the truth, who realize that the tribulation is a time for the re restoration of the nation of Israel, for the Jews, and you realize that the church age is going to end at the rapture, honestly, I don't think we have much time left. Be busy about the Lord's work. Don't waste your time on things that pertain to this life. Thanks for watching. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, just before we go here, I just want to read 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, today is the very last day of December, here where I'm at right now. It's December 31st. Tomorrow, of course, being the first day of a new year. First day of 2010. And you know something? Maybe you've blown it this past year as a Christian. Maybe you should have witnessed and you didn't. Maybe you should have passed out a tract and you didn't. Maybe you should have put a tract down. Maybe you should have preached on the street. A lot of things. Well, the thing that's nice about salvation, about being saved, is you can confess your sins and God is faithful and just. He will forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So make your, if you want to make a New Year's resolution, make this ne next New Year really count for the Lord. Witness to people. You know? Get something done for the Lord this year. And don't dwell on what happened last year. Confess it. Forsake it. Move on. That's it. Thanks.